Welcome to Learning Functional JavaScript Section 7, Laziness. In this final section, we will look into lazy evaluation and types. We will draw on what we learned about recursion in developing infinite sequences and some powerful abstractions on top of them. This is video 7.1, Lazy Evaluation. In this video, we will turn our attention to lazy evaluation and see some ways it can help improve performance as well as open up for interesting abstractions. As we move into the implementation of lazy data structures, we will also make use of what we learned about recursion in the previous section. As we have seen in many, many examples throughout this course, map, filter, reduce, and friends can often help us express the solution to a problem in a very concise and declarative way. Imagine, for instance, that you were working on a blog and you wanted to list the three latest articles written by a specific author. This is expressive enough, but it's also wasteful, especially if there are many blog posts or any of the processing steps are expensive. You might find the three entries you need in the first 10 items in the list, but would still have to filter through another 100,000 entries. The problem is that all of this is evaluated eagerly. First, we filter the entire list of blog posts. Then, we call out to render every one of the matching blog posts. Then, we take the three first rendered posts and do something with them. Ideally, we would only filter the blog post list until we had three matches, render those, and leave it at that. By defining filter and map as lazy functions, we can achieve this. Let's start with map. Instead of mapping over the collection and returning the result, this map function returns an object that only maps an entry when you ask for it. This implementation works for creating a lazy map. As we can see when running the example, the mapping function list is only called once. But there's a problem with our implementation. While this approach works well for map, it does not cut it for filter and many other functions. Why is that? For map, there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the input and the output. For filter, however, it's impossible to say upfront how the output relates to the input. The output may be just as long as the input, a little shorter, or even empty. Another way of defining a lazy sequence relates to how we broke down problems when discussing recursion, namely by breaking the data structure into a first, and a rest. The lazy structure will only compute the first value when you ask for it and return it along with a function that will lazily compute the rest. The cool thing here is that not only is the first element lazily computed, but because map has a one-to-one -one relationship between the input and the output, we can skip computing values when skipping multiple steps ahead. There are still a few more ways in which this can be improved. First, it's obviously rather inconvenient to access high indices as we need to call rest n minus 1 times before calling first to get the nth element. Let's add a helper function. The lazy data structure is recursive in nature. It consists of an object with the first and a rest. The rest is another object consisting of a first and a rest and so on. This recursive nature is mirrored in the nth function, which recursively chips off the list until n reaches 0. Using the nth function reveals that it works well. However, it also reveals that our lazy sequence has no end. Accessing indices outside the valid range simply squares undefined and returns not a number as a result. We need a representation of a lazy sequence. We might be tempted to set rest to return null to mark the end of the list, but that would produce the wrong results for empty lists which is indistinguishable from this situation. A better solution is to return null instead of a lazy sequence when there's no more data. This is a little inconvenient in that it forces us to null check the results, but we can alleviate this by using the nth function and others to work with the lazy sequence and limit the direct use of the lazy sequence methods. We need to update nth to account for this new case. Using this avoids the awkward not a number for the empty list and is able to differentiate an empty list from one containing a single undefined. 
Wow, we've achieved a lot already. We've got more material to cover, but it's going to follow along the same lines. Armed with the working and terminating lazy implementation of map, let's take a stab at filter. Filter is a little different because we cannot assume that the first element of the input will be the first element of the output. Basically, to get the first element of the output, we must scan through the input until we hit something that matches. The basic structure is the same as with map. However, filtering makes getting the first and rest a little bit more involved. To help with this, we extract a helper function find matching index, which does all the heavy lifting and can be called from both first and rest. It's not ideal that it actually computes the same index twice, but that could be optimized easily enough. Running it produces the expected results, and as we can see, the nth abstraction works well with the filter result too. Let's combine our two lazy sequences. Sadly, running this simply prints null to the console. What happened? Well, filter is only able to work with arrays, and we're giving it a lazily mapped sequence. We can fix this by converting the array to a sequence and then change map and filter to only support sequences. Now this looks eerily familiar. There seems to be an opportunity for map, filter and sequence to share some code. We'll get back to that. Now let's update map. This looks just right, doesn't it? Moving on. Filter. Index lookups and imperative looping aren't all that convenient with the sequence API, so we're regressing this into something with more duplication for now. The goal is just to make it work, we'll make it concise and fast later. To rerun our demo, we wrap the list in a sequence and repeat the rest of the steps. This pleasingly prints out the results. If we make our mapping and filtering functions to print something when they're used as well, we gain some more insight. This is rather pleasing. We now have the power to use map and filter for arbitrarily huge data structures and only use some of the results without having to worry about performance. Of course, the keen viewer will spot the duplicated mapping effort in the previous example, but we'll fix that in the next video. In this video, we have learned what lazy evaluation is and how it can enable us to approach big datasets with convenient abstractions without worrying too much about performance. In the next video, we will develop a generalized lazy sequence and then put it to work with infinite sequences in the third video in this section.